Hey guys, Derek and Paula here from Back to Reality. And even though just a couple short weeks ago everything was covered in over a foot of snow, we've had a few days of really warm temperatures and now our entire field is melted and even the garden is completely uncovered. But looks can be deceiving because despite all of these warmer temperatures and sunshine, the wind is still cold. <laughs> And it still drops below freezing every night, which means that our ground is still pretty much frozen solid. And therefore, it's not really the time for us to be planting out here in the garden yet. We gotta start planting inside the cabin. So come with us. <laughs> If you've been following along for a while now, you might recall that by the time we built our first hugel culture mound last season, we were already a few weeks behind the recommended date for planting. And as such, we had no choice but to purchase seedlings from a local nursery. Now, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, and our harvests were still quite successful. But if we hope to one day become fully food self-sufficient, we're going to need to begin taking part in the entire process from seed to harvest. And that is exactly what we intend to do this season. In the future, we hope to construct a small greenhouse to allow us to start our seedlings outdoors, close to our garden and using natural sunlight. But for now, we'll have to accept our current limitations and set up a temporary germination station indoors. Now, in order to grow plants inside, you need a lot of light. We have a lot of natural light in our home, but we don't have a lot of space and our garden is fairly big. So our window sills really are not gonna cut it. So we have another option. Now, if you've seen our cabin tour video, you may recall that we've got an unfinished basement right behind this door. We never gave you a tour of it before because frankly, there's just not a lot to see. It's very utilitarian. Plus, the previous owners left a few of their things behind, and whenever we moved all of our stuff out of our storage unit, we kind of just piled it all on top. So it's pretty messy. But over the next couple of days, we're gonna clean it all out and tidy it all up so that we can free up enough room that we can plant all of our seedlings in the basement. The first step when tackling a new challenge is always to assess the situation. But in this case, it was pretty easy. Our basement was a striving minimalist's nightmare. But assessing a problem doesn't require dwelling on it, so we quickly got to work hauling out everything the previous owners had left behind. An old love seat, some random boxes, half a vacuum cleaner, an old propane water heater, and various other odds and ends. We placed everything in a big pile outside, and we'll sort through all that later to see what can be recycled, reused, or simply taken to the dump. Next, Paula broke out the vacuum cleaner to deal with multiple years worth of cobwebs while I began organizing everything else. Aside from just wanting a tidy basement, our primary goal was to clear off these particular shelves, as we'd already decided that they were the perfect dimensions for our new germination station. So once everything else was taken care of, Paula put special attention into making sure that these were as clean as possible. And when we were done, we were left with plenty of space to house all of the seedlings we could ever need, and probably a few extra for some family and friends gardens as well. But unfortunately, one thing we didn't have was enough light. But we'll get to that in a minute. Because first, with all of our newfound floor space after hauling so many items out of the basement, we decided it would be okay to bring one new thing in. An old table that we'd been keeping around knowing that someday we'd eventually find a use for it. And today was the day. <laughs> Walk. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Away we go. Once we eventually got it down the stairs and into the basement, we set it up in the corner as a perfect space for sowing our seeds. Okay, now back to our lack of appropriate light. Back when we lived in our apartment, we'd set up a pretty respectable hydroponic garden for growing lettuce, basil, and other herbs and leafy greens. And as luck would have it, we'd kept our grow lights and other related equipment in storage while living in our van. Now, there are a number of different types of grow lights available, each with their pros and cons, but we chose to go with T5 fluorescent. At the time, T5s were the best option we had available to us. They produced considerably less heat than high-intensity discharge bulbs, and though they were a little more expensive to run than LED, they were far cheaper to purchase up front. These lights consist of several parts. The ballast, the bulb, a light reflector, and some electrical cables. 
They snap together pretty easily and can be wired together in series so that one outlet can power multiple lights. This is especially handy in a small space. Now, when it comes to grow lights, more is almost always better. So in the past, we've found it best to attach at least two lights side by side, using the provided hanging brackets and a couple of other inexpensive parts. First, we cut two pieces of wood to approximately 10 inches. Next, we drilled some pilot holes and attached some brackets and eye hooks. Then, once we snap the ballasts into the brackets, we end up with twice the light. Finally, we used some S-hooks to attach four lengths of chain. And now, we're almost ready to hang them. But there's one more thing we need to do first. Because like I said, the more light, the better. So the last thing we want to do is waste any. The reflectors do a pretty good job of bouncing back any light that might have otherwise escaped up into the air above the plants. But what about the sides? The light-colored wall will reflect a bit, but I think we can do better. Our favorite reflective material comes in the form of inexpensive foil emergency blankets. You can pick them up at any outdoor store, and they usually only cost a few dollars. Plus, they're incredibly easy to work with. We simply opened one up, cut it in half lengthwise, and then used a bit of duct tape to attach it to the wall. It's best to smooth them out as much as possible, so try not to crumple them up, but a few creases from being folded are no big deal. Okay, now let's hang those lights. We started by laying them all out on the shelf to figure out exactly how we wanted to position them. Then we lined them up with the floor joists above so that we could strategically place some hooks. In the interest of saving time, we made a quick template and then used it to mark all of the hook locations. That way, we can ensure that all the lights will be hung in a straight line and at a consistent height. Once the floor joists were marked, we used a couple of taps of a hammer to start the hooks and then screwed them in by hand. But here's a quick tip. We found that an old tent peg or something similar helps to get a little more leverage and make the job that much easier. Now all that's left is to hang the lights, wire them together, and plug them in. But unfortunately, the cords were a little too short to make it to the outlet. Ah well, we've got a better idea anyway. While cleaning out the basement, we found this old power bar with a 10-foot cord. That's plenty long enough, and besides, it'll also allow us to keep all the light cables neat and tidy and in a centralized location. And there we go. That's it. Now we've got enough lights for 10 of these germination trays. And since each one is divided into 72 cells, that means that with this setup, we can start 720 seedlings all on one shelf. All right, so technically that's everything we need to actually start growing some plants. But there is one more thing that's kind of a, a nice to have. Makes your life a little bit easier. Because once we start growing some plants in here, they're gonna need the light to be on sometimes and off other times. Typically people will leave the lights on for 15 to 16 hours and then off for eight or nine hours. And in order to do that, obviously we can just unplug the lights or flick the switch. But we also have to then remember to do it and we have to be here to do it. And that isn't always the case. So one thing that we did in the past whenever we had our hydroponics set up is we used this timer. It's just a little power bar that has a programmable section to be able to uh, set up a schedule of when you want it to turn on and when you want it to turn off. We found that to be awesome. It made our lives so much easier. But unfortunately, this thing was a pain in the butt to program it, even whenever we knew where the instructions were. Now, fast forward three or four years later, we have no idea where those instructions are, and so I have no idea how to set this thing up. And considering how difficult it was the first time, we've decided an upgrade is necessary. This time, we've chosen to go with the Wemo Insight by a company called Belkin. Now, we have absolutely no affiliation with them whatsoever. This is not a sponsored video. We purchased this ourselves. Uh, it just happens to be the one that uh, did a lot of the things that we wanted it to do. So let me explain. First of all, it's pretty small, way more compact than the other one was. But you may notice that unlike the big complicated power bar, this doesn't have any buttons or a screen, so how the heck do we program it? Well, believe it or not, we use our cell phones. You see, this thing connects through our Wi-Fi network that we already have in the cabin, and then whenever we install an app on our phones, we can use that to set up a schedule on this little guy. But it's even cooler than that, because not only can we set up a schedule and then just let this thing run, turn itself on and off whenever we've told it to, but through our cell phones, we can also manually turn it on and off. As long as our cell phone is connected to the internet, we can control this thing from anywhere in the entire world. 
Now, when it comes to our lights in the basement for our plants, we probably won't need to be turning them on and off if we happen to be away from the house, but it's still kind of cool to know that we have that ability. We can monitor this thing and know exactly what's going on with our plants. But there's one more thing that we really liked about this thing as well. Because having all of these lights on, even though they're T5s and they're totally efficient, they do still draw some electricity. And so we want to keep track of how much. Because first of all, we want to be conscious of the amount of energy that we're using because we want to be eco-responsible. But we also want to know how much money we're dishing out in order to do this. Growing our own vegetables is supposed to be a way to be self-sustainable and to save money. So if we're spending, let's just say, hundreds of dollars to run a bunch of grow lights in the basement, that's not the most efficient way to do it. So, with this little guy and the app on our cell phones, we can actually track the exact amount of power usage that this thing is putting out. And with that, we can figure out exactly how much money it's costing us per day, per week, per month, and per season. So, we're going to test this thing out over the next few months as we're growing all of our stuff in here and we'll report back at the end of it to let you know what we thought of this thing and also exactly how much all of this lighting is costing us. Plus, once the plants start to grow, the chains make it incredibly easy to adjust the lights accordingly. There, we're all set up. And believe it or not, we're actually right on time because some of the plants get planted now and some get planted over the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. We'll show you some updates when we have them. But for now, we'll see you next time. Okay, now I'm afraid. <laughs> How the heck do we get out of here? <laughs> Please find a way. <laughs>